describe melting, solidification, melting, and condensation as processes of heat trans energy transfer without a change in temperature. So they may ask for definitions. So melting is the change of state from solid to liquid state without change in temperature. So this melting will take place at a fixed temperature. So, and that temperature is called the melting point. So the melting point of ice is zero. Melting point can be affected by pressure. This may be extra info for you. Melting point can be affected by pressure. So melting point is lowered when you increase pressure. How do you increase pressure? How do you decrease pressure? In a real, real, real life scenario, how do you increase pressure around you or decrease pressure around you? How to increase pressure, decrease pressure around yourself? But you can move. Uh. Any idea? To decrease pressure, you lie down flat on the floor because the larger surface area, the lesser the pressure. Mm. But let's say I have a let's say I have a bucket of water. Then I want to melt. I I have a bucket of ice. I want to melt it. Then I cannot I cannot change the surface area, contact area, and all that. That there's this concept of atmospheric pressure. That's why, that's why I say this may be not in your syllabus. So it's, for, it's more of a, more of a for general knowledge sake. And also, if in the event, next time you want to do mountain climbing, hmm, I think this info will be good for you. There's this thing, this concept of atmospheric pressure. And places with high altitudes, that means high, high, high mountain X, okay? And then this is on sea level. And this is sea level. And then this is high altitude. So at high altitudes, the pressure is lower. Then sea level, the high pressure is higher. Why you have low pressure up in the mountain top and high pressure at sea level? Because the temperature on top is lower than the temperature at sea level. Not exactly. Because at, at high altitude, right, there's less air. Then at sea level, right, there's more air. So the air exerts a pressure on anyone. So if you have more air, that means you have higher atmospheric pressure. If you have less air, that means you have lower atmospheric pressure. Which also also why, right? If you go mountain climbing at very high altitudes, they will they will ask you to bring your what oxygen or something to help you breathe and all that. Because oxygen that's oxygen mask. Yeah. Have you have you been to that kind of place? No. Yeah, so at high on the mountain, right? Very high on the mountain, then you may need help in breathing. So some have more oxygen mass and all that to breathe because the pressure, the there's very little air up there compared to what we have at sea level. So so at high altitudes, pressure is low. At sea level, the atmospheric pressure is higher. So that means, right, if you go camping, if you go camping here, and then you go mountain climbing and then you camp here. Then you will learn to boil a cup of water or you want to melt something. So if you have low in high pressure, the melting point will be lowered. So that means at sea level, when you go camping, a block of ice will melt faster. The same block of ice, if you bring it up to the mountain top, will melt later at a higher temperature. So pressure will affect melting. If pressure affects melting, it also affects boiling. Then solidification is the reverse of melting. So it changes from liquid to solid without a change in temperature. Then you have freezing point. Freezing point is the temperature at which solidification or freezing happens. Yeah, you will notice my picture up there is just having freezing. This is melting. The top picture, this is freezing. Then impurities will affect freezing. So the freezing point is lowered by the presence of impurities. That means if the freezing point was like zero degrees, you can add impurities and bring the temperature down to maybe say minus two degrees for freezing. Okay, so you can have say it's about winter right now. So if you go to winter countries at this point of time, it's not snowing yet. I don't think it will snow now. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you can go to China. You can go to Japan. You can go to Europe. Korea. Yeah, Korea. It, it will snow. So when it snows, then you will have 
a lot of things on the floor, a lot kind of things. Then it is difficult to drive, right? Because you will slide. So sometimes people will want to get rid of the, the ice that is on the floor, on the road. So they will add something to it and then you cause the ice to melt. So what it does down here is, but of course the temperature of that place mustn't be too, shouldn't be too cold. Lah. If not, you add how much impurities onto the ground, it will not melt anyway. So you add some, some impurities, you can add salt, you can add anything onto the ice because they are impurities. The melting, the freezing point will be brought down by one or two degrees. Then it will melt and you will not freeze. So then you have the temperature of that place has to go lower, then it will, then the water will freeze again. That's how impurities will affect the freezing point. So you pour out. You have cars, kind of thing, then you add impurities, then the whatever ice on the floor will melt because it doesn't freeze anymore. Boiling, I'm sure you're quite familiar with this, right? So it's a process where liquid changes to gas at boiling point. So it happens, then the boiling point is the temperature at which boiling happens and it also happens at a constant temperature. So impurities, just now we talked about impurities affecting the melting point. Impurities also affect the boiling point. So it will increase the boiling, uh, increase the temperature at which is boiled. In this one, right, it's maybe it's boiling at 100. If you add salt, or if you add other things, the boiling point may go up to 101 or 102. So it brings the temperature higher. Then pressure also affects the boiling point. So it will, if you increase pressure, the boiling point will also increase. That means, let's go back to that mountain top down there. Camping again, here and here. Like sea level, water boils at 100. At what temperature will water boil on the mountain top. Make a random guess. What do you think? Is it going to be more than 100 or lesser than 100? Less than 100. Yeah. So it can be like 90 something, 80 something, depending on how high the mountain is. And oh, negative 5 degrees. <laughs> negative 5 degrees, not very possible. Eh? And you should Google for data and find out what is the boiling point of water at on Mount Everest. Then we have condensation. So condensation is a, a process whereby the vapor, so in gas form, will change into liquid or solid without having a change in temperature. Could also be sublimation. So you see water boils, and then you have this vapor on the that that comes out, and then it touches the cover of that pot. Then you see the condensation up there and then what it becomes water droplets again and it drips back into the pot. See that condensation is happening there. So you have the heating curve just now. Just now I keep mentioning that a melting, boiling, change of state always happen at a constant temperature. You see, if you draw, if you take, an, take a substance and okay, water, let's say water, then you just melt it, you start with ice, and then after that you heat it up. Then you trace your temperature at every, say every fixed interval, maybe say every one minute you measure, of every five minutes you measure the temperature of the substance. Then you do it until the point where the water boils and evaporate or the substance boils and evaporate. You, you trace that kind of thing. Then you collect all the data, the temperature and the time and you can plot out the graph. Once you plot out the graph, it will show you something like this. It will show you something like this with two flat lines in the graph. So that graph, right, you call it the heating curve. So the very first flat line you see is the melting point. And the second flat line you see is the boiling point. Did the school teacher this? Chemistry have. Uh, you see this yeah. chemistry. Yeah. So if you do that, you'll find a graph with two flat lines. And one is the melting point and one is the boiling point. 
So before the melting point takes place, you will notice that the solid, is, that the substance is in solid form. Then after the first horizontal line, right, you see that everything has converted into liquid. Then for boiling, it's the same. Before that, it's liquid. And then after the horizontal line, you see a gas. That, then what happens here right, during melting is you have solid and liquid together. And at boiling, you have liquid and gas together. Okay, so this is the heating curve. So from the heating curve, you need to know when is the melting point and when is the boiling point. So they will draw, they will draw a curve, and then after that, give you some necessary info. Then they will ask you which part of the graph the substance is in solid state, which part of the graph the substance is in liquid state, and also of course gas like which part will be in gas like. Then after that, then they will ask you which part. Okay, what is the melting point of the substance? What is the boiling point of the substance? So you will have to identify from the graph. So melting point is the first horizontal, boiling point is the second horizontal. And during melting, there's solid and liquid particles. Then boiling, there's liquid and gas. It's a mixture. The melting point, no change in temperature. No, it will always but be the same. Change in particle. Uh, the particle arrangement will change, but temperature is the same. Because all the temp all the heat that is absorbed by the substance has gone into overcoming the bonds in between. So it is used to increase the potential energy in the particles. So whereas in the other parts of the graph where there's increase in temperature, right? Whatever heat, whatever energy that is being input into the substance is used to increase the speed of the substance uh, the, of the molecules. So what happens during melting, heat is absorbed to break or overcome attractive forces between particles so that they can break free from their fixed position and are able to move about. So the heat supplied has a special name, it's called the latent heat of fusion, but I'm not, elab I'm not elaborating on latent heat of fusion. It's just a name. So for, for pure physics, they would ask questions like, how much energy is required to melt a substance? Then you have to take out a calculator and do calculation. But for combined science, there's no, no need to do that. So I'm stopping here. Then, then I'll just go to the next part. Then what happens during boiling? So heat is absorbed to break the attractive forces between particles so that they can move about freely and in random direction, in all directions. So this one, the heat supplied here is the latent heat of vaporization. That's all. Okay. okay. Then we have the reverse. There's this, this other thing called the cooling curve. So cooling curve, that means you take a, a gas, then after that, you cool the temperature down. So you allow, let's say now water, uh, water vapor, then you allow it to condense, then it becomes liquid. Then after that, you collect the liquid and let it, uh, you call, cool it down even further, and then you cause it to freeze. Then you see the temperature is going downwards. You see the graph is going down this way. Just now, this one, right? The graph is going upwards. So again, you have two horizontals. One is condensation and the other one is freezing. Mm, a fixed temperature. And during condensation, there's gas and liquid here. And then that and freezing, there's liquid and solid together. And same goes in the question, they can ask you what is the freezing temperature of substance X? if you are presented with this. Then they will ask you to label the freezing point, the freezing point, or then ask you for the condensation point. Then they ask you at which portion is there is liquids and which portion there's gases, etc. etc. Okay? okay. So during heating, so during boiling and melting, you take in energy. In cooling, you release energy. So the Condensation here, latent heat of vaporization is released. So the particles become less vigorous and then they will form in order to form the attractive forces between the particles. So the gas will change into liquid. So the second one, right, freezing, you release latent heat of fusion. And so that is what happened down here. When they release the latent heat of fusion, your strong attractive forces will be formed again. So the particles, right, that were all in the disordered arrangement, right, then they will now 
arrange themselves into regular and fixed regular pattern and fixed position again because they want they are going to change from liquid to get a uh, solid state. So that's what happens. We will state what hap what processes happen during B and C and D and E. Swallow, swallow. Yeah. So B C is melting and D E is boiling that one okay. Then this one, we have done this before. State a reason why uh, that has caused the temperature to increase from A to B. Okay, how? Yeah. Okay, so let's go back. So you have this, you have internal energy. So you have potential energy and kinetic energy. They total up to internal energy. So then they say that the internal energy will have potential energy. Uh, actually down here there's potential energy. Uh, the potential energy component is related to intermolecular forces of attraction and the distance between the molecule. So potential energy is uh, is basically uh, involved when there is a change of state. Then, uh, so molecules with more potential energy move further away from each other. So that is that. Then we have this one, there's uh, kinetic energy, where it's, uh, what it's uh, associated with is uh, the movement of the molecules and it's directly related to temperature of the object. So if you have higher temperature of the object, right, that means the kinetic energy is greater. So which means when it comes to boiling, so the front part here, there's a raise in temperature. That means energy is used to, energy is taken in to increase the vibration and the movement of the particles inside the solid. So it becomes faster, the molecules move faster. So same goes here and same goes here. So it's used to raise the Ke of the molecules, which is then related to temperature. So then back to that question, this one is a state why state a reason why there is a increase in temperature from a and B. So that means energy has been put in to raise the kinetic energy component of the atoms and the molecules. So there is a increase, the molecules move faster, the temperature increase. You see? Okay. Then down here, they say explain why the temperature remains constant in the following region. One, the BC. We also done this before. But what should the answer be? Some more. So it overcomes the intermolecular forces of attraction. Then, and then what happens? Does the what happens to the molecules? You can put in more information. That you need to insert more information because later on they will ask what happens why the temperature remains constant at BE. So, so your part one answer and part two answer shouldn't be exactly the same. So, so okay, so I let you know there is a part two where they ask why the temperature remains constant in the region DE. Then what's the difference? Okay, so I let you in on the, 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 the answer. Okay, what is missing? Then later you answer DE with more uh, precision, accuracy, or with more details. Okay, so energy is okay, energy is absorbed so that they can overcome the attractive force between them in order to this is the this this is the one that you you missed out on 
Okay, then the second part. Vaporization happens. Uh, the heat is absorbed to break the attractive forces between the particles. Then what happens to the particles? What happens to the movement of the particles? So they can break free from their confined space or break free from their uh, break free from their confined space. Yeah, so they can break, uh, overcome or overcome the attractive forces. Then they can break free from what confined space they have. Then they move freely in all directions. Okay, we are good done here. State the temperature where the substance change from liquid to solid state. Let me be solid to liquid. Liquid to solid state. Because it's a heating curve. Yeah, it's a... Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. But then, the it's a heating curve. So the temperature, the, the process where it will change from a solid to liquid state. Uh, so that is melt. Thing. So the liquid to solid, this one is freezing. Freezing happens the, at the same temperature as melting. So if you have the melting temperature, you will have the freezing temperature. So yeah, it's 20. We have a challenge done here. We need to draw. We have three kilograms of ice at negative eight degrees. Then it's left in the room at a temperature of 25 degrees to melt. Then you are supposed to sketch the temperature time graph for the melting ice. So I will provide the axis. So temperature time graph, right? So that means the y axis is temperature. Then the horizontal is time. It starts at negative eight. And then the room temperature is 25. Then you must know at which temperature it starts melting. And the horizontal will be at that temperature. Okay, think about these few points. Yeah. So when you draw something like this, you have to make sure you include the melting point, the boiling point, if it's within the range. So the boiling point is 100, but our graph is from negative 8 to room temperature 25. So the boiling point will not be included. So we only have the melting point. We have a substance with a boiling point at 80. Which of the statement is true? Hmm. Why did you choose D? It's a, it's a question about boiling point. Then we choose the best answer. So A, evaporation of the liquid takes place above 80. Evaporation uh, happens all the time at any temperature. So A is out. Then B, liquid is changed into vapor entirely when it's placed in pure boiling water. Means if you, pure boiling water is at 100. So if you have this substance, you put it into something with 100 and it boils at 80, that means by when it's in boiling water, all of it will become gas and then it will just disappear. I mean, disappear as in it escapes if it's an open container. If it's not an open container, then you will see it in the container and then it becomes gas. Then part C, the substance, so in the, sub, the plate particles in the substance will break free from their fixed position at this temperature. This sounds like break, Break free from the, their fixed position sound like it is a, a melting process. So the melting process should happen way below 80, so it's not. Then the substance will condense at a temperature below 80, sounds about right. Uh, it, ha it, it happens at any temperature as long as it hits a full surface, not necessary be not necessary 80. So, so B has a has uh sounds more cor more correct than D. B sounds like a better answer than D. D is not entirely wrong. 
this is um may not be exactly tested. Last last time I said uh last time I said that so I will stop at where the words are and I will not go into deeper details for the process. I mean as in when latent heat is involved. So but I did mention that latent heat of fusion is uh is the energy that is absorbed to melt uh, a substance. Then it also is the energy that is released when something frees. Then latent heat of solidification, there's no such thing. And then there's no such thing as latent heat of condensation either. So latent heat of vaporization is the energy that is absorbed when uh, the substance change from liquid to gas. So then the energy is re Later, heat of vaporization is released when it changes from gas to liquid. That's why the answer is C. The details, I not say details, but this, this, these words, right, these phrases are found in my notes. Just, just know, I just touch and then I just go. Which part of the graph is labeled incorrectly? That picture is wrong. Yeah, it's correct. Which one is not true about boiling? So rapid process, it takes place at one temperature, then it takes place throughout the liquid. It has a cooling effect on the liquid. Okay, which process has a cooling effect on of the liquid on the liquid? Hmm? No, 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 no. Cooling effect on the liquid, that means it leaves the liquid colder at a lower temperature. Condensation. Condensation. Condensation is a process where it returns from, uh, from gas to liquid. Okay, it releases energy. Let me uh, tell you a situation. Then you will know what I mean as in cooling effect. Huh? It's like this. Then we have a swimming pool down here. Okay. Then, then you went swimming and then you got out of the pool. Right. Then once you got out of the pool, right, then you did not get your tower. Then what will happen to you? You will get cold. Yeah. Then you feel cold. Okay. Why did you feel cold? Because the temperature in the is colder than the temperature in the air. Mm. The, temp the, 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 the temperature in the water is colder than the temperature of the air. So then if you come out already, shouldn't you feel warmer instead of feeling cold because outside is warmer than the water? Because your body is still wet because you just came out of the pool. Okay, so what happens when your body feels wet? After that, what happens when you come out of the pool? Hmm. Late, it will lead to the later section of the, the lesson. So what happens is there's water on your body, on the surface of your body. Then outside is warmer. Then when outside is warmer, so the, the water on your body will evaporate because it gains energy and then evaporate. So most of the energy that the water gains, right, to evaporate, right, comes from your body, from the surface of your body. So when it eva when evaporation takes place, energy gets re gets taken out from your body, from the surface of your body. Then now your because energy is on your body has been reduced, so then you know that energy re uh, the energy right is related to temperature first slide energy that is lost is related to temperature so that means your temperature body temperature become lower so you become cold so answer a right it has a cooling effect on the liquid this is actually an effect of evaporation 